Hello, my name is Nigel Bowden and I'm the author of the book Microtick Scripting and uh, I thought I'd put together a short video series uh, to accompany the book to help you get started with your own journey in creating scripts for the Microtick platform. Uh, this is lesson one in a series of videos uh, and in this one we'll be looking at how you can set up your own uh, development environment to create scripts and uh, start coding uh, and running them, testing them uh, and building features for your own Microtik setup. Um, so just before we get started, I just wanted to um, let you know there's a few sort of assumptions I've made about uh, people who watch this video. I obviously can't teach you all aspects of uh, Microtik um, uh, config creation and all the commands which are available I'm going to be focusing very much on the scripting language side of things so I'm uh, I'm assuming you're somebody who's something like uh, maybe a network engineer or a network admin maybe you're a student who's studying um, and you're fairly familiar with things like router OS um, the Microtik uh, configuration commands that you use on your own equipment um, the, that you know what Winbox is and how to use it and you've got your own copy uh, and you can find your way around that. Uh, I also assume you've got access to a Microtik device to uh, practice with and set up labs and um, there are sort of two main flavors of uh, Microtik Router OS at the moment, version 6 and version 7. And the uh, examples we'll be looking at will work on either. Um, it's just the configuration commands will uh, need to change slightly if you're using version 7. It's a slightly different format, but the, um, the scripting commands that we use that wrap around the commands are going to be exactly the same. So it's just a question of substituting the configuration commands uh, for your particular version. The examples I'll be doing will be version 6 purely because that's what I've got on my Microtik at the moment. But as I say, I, either will work. It's pretty straightforward to convert them. Um, just before we get into um, the uh, topic, just wanted to give a very quick plug for the book and this video series isn't going to be just one long advert for the book but I'll just sort of talk about it briefly. It does go through uh, the process of creating your own scripts in quite a bit of detail. Even if you're not a developer, if you're a network engineer like me and you're not used to coding, um, it's definitely worth getting a hold of a copy and uh, working through it. Uh, if you work through from start to finish, I'll take you through the process of actually uh, building your own script, scripts, the workflows and putting them together and how to test them and uh, put them onto the Microtik device. So um, definitely worth a look if you're interested in uh, developing your own scripts. Um, there's quite a few code examples as well and they're actually uh, available on GitHub. You can see the link um, to, the, to the book website on the screen there and uh, you can get to the all of the uh, sample code from there. Um, the book's available in print and Kindle versions from Amazon. I'm hoping to maybe uh, extend that to other platforms in the fullness of time, so it'd be worth checking if I've managed to put it onto any other platforms uh, at some time in the future. And uh, it's also worth going on there because it's quite a handy cheat sheet that I put together. I've got a copy of it here. Uh, you can sort of print it off and laminate it up and uh, it's really good reference for all of the commands and operators and things um, uh, once you're sort of really getting into things and you just want to look up commands. Um, so that's it. That's enough of a plug for the book. We'll get on with the, uh, the this particular lesson. And um, you just uh, you may sort of be wondering, you know, why would you want to create router OS scripts anyhow? Um, it's where well, you can see all the points on the screen there. It's very good for automating complex configuration tasks rather than doing them manually. If you want to create your own utilities uh, for your Microtik device, especially things like monitoring and building alerting scripts to alert you when something's gone wrong or thresholds been breached, maybe. Um, uh, maybe there's um, a particular feature that you'd really like in Router OS, which you can't have, it isn't available via a single command. You can sort of combine commands and scripting commands and um, uh, build your own uh, piece of functionality, uh, custom functionality for your environment. Uh, if there's administration tasks that you'd like to um, uh, automate, you can build them into a script and run them from a scheduler. Uh, yeah, any sort of repetitive tasks that you have to go into your Microtik device for and do time and time again, stick them in a script and you can either just call them from the command line or you could uh, put them on the scheduler if they're um, uh, tasks you need to do on a regular basis and you can also do it for um, use it for creating reporting data maybe you'd 
like to extract some data from some commands. Maybe you'd like to um, post it to uh, a, a, an API endpoint on the web, or maybe you'd like to do an FTP transfer to a particular repository. But there's various ways you can get data off and use it for reporting on external systems. So those are the reasons we might want to create a script. You can do some really powerful, useful things and really extend the functionality of your MicroTik device. So um, just a quick look at what is a script. It sort of sounds a bit daunting if you're not into coding and you haven't done this sort of thing before. Um, and they are relatively straightforward. It is just a simple text file. You could create it with something like Notepad uh, on Windows if you wanted to. It's just a series of commands uh, that you type uh, sequentially. They obviously have to be in a format which is syntactically correct uh, to be accepted by the command processor on, on the MicroTik device. But you literally just create a, a simple text file, a series of commands, and you can then run that on the MicroTik device using something like the import command. Uh, there's actually two types of commands in Router OS that uh, it, it's useful to be aware of. There's the configuration commands, which you're probably fairly used to, which is, you can see the example on screen there, uh, uh, a command to actually uh, print out all of the Ethernet interfaces, and you can use uh, various commands to configure various aspects of the of the MicroTik configuration, and they all begin with the forward slash um, as I say, the example on screen is forward slash interface Ethernet print. So all of the commands that begin with the forward slash are configuration commands which alter or provide information uh, about the configuration of the MicroTik uh, device. Uh, and then we've got the global commands, which I sort of think of as more of the scripting commands. And these are the ones that we're going to learn most about. And they will begin with the uh, the two dots there, the, the colon. The example on the screen there you can see is a logging command, which will actually log a warning message into the uh, logging system of the MicroTik. And as I say, they will begin with the colon, and they're the ones that we'll sort of be focusing on uh, um, you know, in terms of in most of our learning throughout this series of videos. Um, once you've actually built a script, you can run it from uh, the scheduler on the on the MicroTik device. Uh, there's a script repository you can um, paste your code into, or you can run um, uh, run them from the CLI. If you just transfer the whole script as a file onto the file system of the MicroTik, you can then just fire it up from the CLI and uh, and get it to do um, whatever actions you've you've configured. So so that's what we mean when we're talking about uh, a script. And this is a very simple example. And uh, there's two examples just to show you a contrast of standard configuration commands and how we might actually wrap these in um, uh, global commands, the scripting commands. So this is just showing you uh, how we might create 10 VLANs on a MicroTik device. And it's just a series of interface commands, as you can see. And... Um, it, you know, we it's not very scalable. If you wanted to create 50 or 100 VLANs, you'd have to have, you know, as many lines of um, uh, scripting uh, commands as there are VLANs. And uh, it, it's not a sort of very um, uh, co comprehensive uh, way of, of doing it. Uh, the best way uh, of actually doing it is to actually uh, wrap it in some scripting commands. And what we've got here is an example of how uh, we could take that same command and uh, wrap it in a few short scripting commands to make a very scalable and easy to use um, script. So just very briefly what we're doing here, you can see we've actually got the slash interface command here and we've actually got a few other um, bits and pieces wrapped in here. These things that begin with a dollar sign of variables, but it, it, it's broadly the same command. But what we've done is we've wrapped it in a for loop here and we've actually stepped through the values from 500 to 510. And then what we've done is just rerun the same command multiple times, just substituting in different values um, for each of the VLANs that we like to create. And you, know, you can see the beauty of this is if we wanted to create um, 100 VLANs, we could just change the two value there to uh, you know 599 and it just the same piece of code would uh, scale up to very large numbers of um, VLAN creation. And that's just a, a sort of taster of what um, of what you can do with scripting um, uh, scripting commands. Um, so in terms of how we go about building 
and running our scripts. It's a four-stage process. We start by creating the scripts, and we usually do that on some sort of development machine, so it'd be like a, a Windows laptop or, or a um, uh, maybe you've got a Mac, OS, a Mac OS machine, or maybe you've got a, um, uh, a Linux laptop. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to use is fine. Uh, and then once you've created that, you create a simple script file with the um, script commands in, then you deploy it to the MicroTik. So you could maybe uh, SF, uh, SFTP the script across to the MicroTik. Then once it's on there, you actually run it and test it to make sure it actually behaves as you would expect and see if there's any errors in the code that you've um, uh, that you've created. And then finally, we do some sort of debugging. If there is a problem, um, we'll actually have to uh, inspect the code that we've created, maybe make some alterations to it, push it again back to the MicroTik and, uh, and keep sort of going through this process until we've got bug-free code that runs smoothly and provides the function that we're, we're hoping that it will. Um, I'm a network engineer, uh, probably very much like yourself, and I always like to have a, a lab either at work or at home where I've got various pieces of equipment to set up and test configurations and I've sort of taken the same approach here it's definitely worth building your own development lab if you like it's some it, it's it has to be it, it can be very um, straightforward and simple it can literally be just some sort of development machine like a uh, like a, a Windows, Apple, Linux um, laptop, and you just need at least one MicroTik device to actually transfer your scripts onto and uh, to, to run them, to test them. And it's also good to have uh, some sort of uh, internet connection as well because there are a couple of pieces of software you want to download uh, to our development machine. And if the MicroTik device itself Want, needs to access the internet for some of the scripts that you create. It's uh, it's always worth having that connection available. Um, on your development machine, there's a couple of pieces of uh, code we want to install. We want to put Winbox on there. Um, we don't need that too much for um, for our scripting activities, but it's just useful to be able to uh, have a look at the configuration and the setup of the MicroTik. Um, but the main piece of code that we want is um, a, a development editor called Visual Studio Code, and that's uh, free to download and use, and uh, that works on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. Uh, and so that will be um, our main sort of development tool, uh, which we use for creating the code and for actually transferring the scripts to um, the MicroTik device. Uh, and running our tests. So uh, that's the sort of lab that you'll need to get set up. Uh, and we're sort of coming towards the end of this particular video and uh, you, you'll have a piece of uh, uh, homework to do <laughs> to get ready for the next lab. So uh, what I'd like you to do is to make sure you've got yourself a MicroTik device set up on your own, uh, own uh, home lab or work lab, wherever you are. Um, get yourself a development machine set up and get Winbox on there. You can have um, it's natively available for Windows, uh, but there are ways of installing it for Linux and Mac OS. And I've got the links on the screen there. Uh, you also need to install a copy of Visual Studio Code onto your development machine. And as I say, that is free. Um, it's very easy just to download and install via whatever your normal. Uh, operating system install processes on, on Windows. I know you literally just download, hit the uh, the executable, and it's just next, next, next to put the uh, to put the code on there. So very straightforward to put on there. Um, also, make sure that your development machine can get to the internet and that you can get to your MicroTik device. So, if you fire at Winbox, make sure you can actually get to get to the um, MicroTik device and have a look at its config, etc. Um, so that's it for this um, first lesson. We've j literally just had a quick look at the sort of workflows involved, how we set up our development environment so we can get stuck into a bit of coding. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this lesson. I hope that's been useful. And in the next lesson, we'll actually look at how to configure uh, Visual Studio Code uh, to create a script. We'll create a script, put it onto a MicroTik, very simple script just to uh, get the ball rolling and get you going with creating your own scripts. So I hope that's been useful. Look forward to seeing you next time. Um, take care and thanks for joining me.